In this video, we're going to talk about a very important skill for the average FileMaker developer, and that is importing data into your FileMaker custom database or custom application. Now, when importing data, you have to make sure that you actually have a file that can be read by a FileMaker. Now, there are a number of different file formats that can be accepted. Of course, you could imagine that Excel would be accepted. That's a common thing. But there are a number of other more obscure file formats that you might see. If you think about an Excel file, you have a column and then another column, another column. Well, that's Excel's format, but there are other formats like comma delimited between them, tab delimited, all sorts of formats that you're likely to see that FileMaker needs to be able to import and bring in. So of course, FileMaker has a screen where you can set all this up, and that's what we're gonna dive into right now. So I've dropped into a copy of FM Starting Point. This copy happens to be running up on the cloud on a cloud server. What I also have, I'm gonna hide my screen there, is this file right here. This is a CSV file or comma separated text. So if I double click it on my Mac, it opens in Excel automatically, and you can see that this is sample data. In fact, I've included this in your work files, pretty handy. This is 5,000 sample records of uh, information, address in the United States, and an email, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. So what I wanna do is pretend like we've been hired by our customer to import this data, or maybe you're an in-house developer and you're working on your own FileMaker file. And so someone is giving you these customers, these are your hot leads maybe, and you need to import these into FileMaker. So let's talk about doing that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this down on my desktop. I'm gonna go back into FileMaker and I'm gonna go uh, over to my contact screen right here. Now the reason I navigate over to the contact screen right here is because when you do an import, the default table it will want to load the data into happens to be the table that's represented on the layout right now. So we're in the contacts section right here. If I go to layout mode, you'll see that we are looking at a table called TO5 contacts. And so it's gonna to wanna to load the data into the contact section, which makes sense. If this actually happened to be a export of invoices or of products or something like that, then we wanna to navigate to that area first and then implement the import command. So I'm gonna go back to browse mode real quick and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go file down to import over to file right here. And we're gonna to have to target the file to import. I've got this uh, 5000 uh, CSV right here. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to uh, open it. Now, once again, by the way, right here, you can see all available. So we can look at comma separated, tab separated, all these different kind of uh, file formats here. And a newer feature that FileMaker has added recently, which is this custom separated values, which means that if you have a format that's not tab or not comma separated, you could look at something like this, and then also, of course, uh, have it look at a different delimiter, right? Makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to all available. I'm gonna select my 5,000, I'm gonna say open. So we get this dialog right here, which is a newer version of this dialog. It's been updated by FileMaker, and what's important to understand is that on the left side, we have the source material. On the right side is our current file. Now, once again, we navigated to contacts, which was my whole strategy. So it thinks that we're trying to import contact data, which we are. And of course, on the left side, if I flip through the records here, I can see what these records look like. So as I flip through, I can see that this is Willard, and this is Parker, and this is Jules, and all this sort of stuff over here. So of course, this is all lined up all the way across here. Now, most of the time when you import a file, you're not gonna get field names that are part of the import. So for example, when you open it up, it will look like this. All you'll see are names and addresses, for example. Very rarely will you get something that looks like this. The sample file has this. The very first record happens to be the name of the field. So this uh, sample file that I have, the first row of it, if I go back to Excel over here, the very first row happens to be the field names. That is super convenient for us, but the reality is most of the time, it won't look like that. Most of the time, you'll get something like this where it'll be blank, right? I'll just say delete that, and this would be the typical export you would have right here. It would just be a bunch of name, it would be a bunch of data, and you would have to kind of figure out that that's the first name and last name and that kind of thing. In fact, when you work with a customer, you're gonna have to kind of work with them to figure out what the data actually is because you might have a phone number and then another phone number and you don't know which one's their home phone number, which one's their cell phone or their emergency contact number. 
because they probably aren't labeled. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over out of the way. And understand that as I flip through here, I can tell the system, hey, I want to identify a certain record as being the labels I want to use right here. And so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to come back to record number one. I'm going to say, use this one. Use this record right here as the field name. So it takes these names here, copies them over here. And then so as I move forward here, notice that it's locked that in over here. If I decided that this record was actually a better one, I could say, use this one, right? So it's not really locked into using the very first record. You have the ability to pick a specific record to use to help you identify how you want to do the import. So I'm going to go back to the first record over here. I'm going to say use as field names. And so it sets that back up. Now I look across over here and I got first name, first name. Um, well, these aren't even lined up correctly. If you look right here, this is first name and this is name last. This is real typical. We have a company, but no title. And so the goal is for you to line this stuff up. Now, in older versions of this import dialog, you would click and drag things around. But a lot of the imports these days are so big, it's really hard to drag and drop things around when you have several hundred fields. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, this actually needs to be the name first. So I can select that and it moves it up there. Name first was down here, so it removed it here and it dropped it up there. Now I do have a last name, so let's go ahead and click over here. And somewhere I have a last name in here, but I'm not sure where it's at. So I want to say, how about last? And see, then it shows up like that, and you just select it, and it goes in there. So the quick search here is super awesome. Now, we don't want title, we want a company field. And I think in starting point, we call that account. I could look at company here, but it doesn't exist. See, nothing shows up. And I know in FM starting point, we covered this in other videos, we actually use the word account. Uh, so there it is, account name. So that's our company name, puts it in there. And so then we have primary uh, street one, address, city, county, which is a regional area. So I'm looking at county right here and I decide I really don't wanna import the data. So I can click on this section in the middle and say, don't import this field. So it grays it out, it says don't import. And then of course we have state, which is not the same as a postal code. So I'm gonna click over here, I'm gonna type in uh, state, and I have primary state uh, one. Uh, so I'm gonna go and put that right there. And then I'm going to come down here to zip code, which is like uh, a territory code, right? I'm gonna put zip, see if I have that. What would that even be called? Maybe probably it'd be under primary. Let's see what we have. Primary uh, postal code. Yeah, that's what we call it in starting point. So it's a postal code one. We use that to help the international people a little bit. So I'm gonna put that right there. So we got the postal code right there. And then I have a container photo, which of course there are no container images over here. So that definitely is not correct. So I'm gonna go over here and go to phone. And I know there's more than one phone in our system. I'm just gonna put phone one, for example, okay? And then we have a fax number. I would just put phone two if we had that. And then email, it actually got that right. It guessed and got that one right. And then of course we have a web address over here. It's set to not import. Let me see if I have anything about web. Website right there. So let's go ahead and turn that on and notice it turns that on automatically. Now there are a couple additional things to consider here. The next most immediate issue is auto enter options. And if you've been learning about relational databases, we know that all these tables have a primary key, ID underscore contact, for example. In fact, we're in the contacts table here, so it would be, yeah, ID underscore contact is our primary key. And so we wanna make sure that populates automatically as we import these records, right? Now, if we were importing the records and we were bringing the primary key in with us, then we would not want to do the auto enter option. We would want to copy the primary key over. Make sense? But in this case, we're doing an import out of Excel. Excel has no idea about primary keys. And as a result, we just want it to auto populate in FileMaker. And if actually we look back over here on the screen, um, we don't even see the primary key on here on the right side at all anywhere. And that makes sense. We, we're, we'd prefer that it auto enter. Um, but there's some other things here like account name. And so I guess it's set for auto enter options somehow uh, in starting point. I'd have to check that out. Same for this field right here. Uh, auto enter options. Probably these are lookup values, I would guess, based upon the account. And so you can set these to be individually turned on or off. So the auto enter option would auto populate on top of the data. So say for example, we import phone number in and then we run auto enter options on it. 
It's going to import the data and then it will allow the auto enter option to run on top of it. So it would blank it out and put the auto enter data in. Now, auto enter is part of basic field definitions. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and check out your field definitions on auto enter options. So keep in mind, auto enter will override or will effectively replace the imported data on a field by field basis. Now, down at the bottom here, this part right here corresponds to all this stuff up here. And so um, I could turn them all on or all off right here. Notice that they all the colors went on or off. I could turn them all on or I could be somewhat selective. I, these are all the fields here and you can't really see it because it's kind of going off the bottom of my video. But you could turn certain ones on or off. So I could turn this one off. Notice that one grayed out. I could turn certain ones on. So I can control it from this popover window right here or I can control it individually right here as well. Notice that once some of them are on or off, we get the little hash right here instead of the checkbox, right? So all on, all off, and then kind of a in-between setting. So that's a really important consideration. Now the question is, should you use the auto import options? Well, in this video, I've taken this conversation as about as far as I can. We have another video where we talk about doing multiple imports and keeping related records connected or doing an import and splitting data across multiple tables. That's where it becomes really critical because you need to make sure that you have a primary key in your contact record. Say for example that we turn off all the auto enter options here and then we run this, there won't be a primary key in any of these contact records. And of course that would lead to a database like Starting Point or any other system probably not working well because you'd want to have a related invoice, but it wouldn't work. You know, we're back to that video where we talk about the bridge and the relationships. If you don't have the primary key, you can't make the bridge to the other side, right? So this becomes a much deeper kind of conversation. And of course, as you get more experience with that, you'll be more comfortable with that process. Now, the other thing I want to point out here, very importantly, is that we are adding records to the system. So if we had a million records in starting point already or in this contacts table and we brought 5,000 in, we'd have a million 5,000 records. But we also have the option right here, I'm gonna move it over here a little bit, that we can add records, we can update records, or we can replace records. Now, add makes sense. So let me jump down to the replace function. This is where you have a found set of records and really you're going to replace them out with a import, right? And that's one you're going to want to play with a little bit to get your head wrapped around that. The interesting one is the update. The update one, if you look over here, you'll see this little uh, blue box right here. The way the update works is that if you identify a primary key on the source side and a matching primary key on the destination side, so the source being on the left or the tar and the target being on the right, what this does, the update effectively establishes a very temporary relationship based upon those two values, and it brings over the fields that you have mapped over based upon that relational lock. So this is like a temporary relationship that only exists during the import process. It's really quite cool. It's a very powerful feature. I would say 95% of FileMaker users never use it. I've used it a handful of times, mostly because I forget it's there. So the default behavior, of course, the import dialog is just to always import the data in, which is what most people want. But you could do a selective update based upon two primary keys that you establish right here. So if I run it this way, what I'm gonna have to do is I click back over here, and then I have to say that, well, we're gonna do a relationship match. Uh, let's do it based on email. That would be the closest one that might be unique, right? I'd say match this. And so what it would do is it's gonna match, you know, Rick at RC Consulting on the left and Rick at RC Consulting on the right. And if it does, then it brings the data over. If it doesn't find the match, then no data comes over. Of course, given that option, you could always say, add the remaining records as new. It, so it could update the ones where you get a match of the primary key and just add the rest of the records to the contacts table. So out of 5,000, maybe you update 4,500, and then 500 are really totally new. So that is a super cool feature right there. Once again, really underused, but very powerful. So I encourage you to check out the import dialog. This is one of the areas that FileMaker has decided to update and invest in. 
So you'll probably see little changes to this dialog as the versions progress forward. But this is a very cool update to the product. And I very much like the visual aspects of this import dialog. In fact, it has some neat additional features that we really haven't had before. Once again, being able to identify certain records that become our label. We've talked about that previously. Additionally, you could import other text files that have other delimiters besides comma and text. So this is pretty cool stuff.